Welcome to Dr. Ram's Academy. Now here we are going to have with our medical coding evolution. As promised by us, we are going to deliver the free videos for our students as committed by us. So this would be of immense help for students who aspire to become prospective medical coders. Let's begin the session. So now we are going to discuss how the system of medical coding developed from ancient times. We are in 2020, but most of us think that medical coding would be the, the latest profession. But that's not the case. That's not true. Because this system of coding was developed in the period of like 1600s. So it's like medical coding was developed 400 years back. Okay, so we, it is quite inquisitive to know who is a pioneer of making this system a great success, right? Okay, before that, going to coding system we need to know what is uh, coding of its coding of medicine so what is medicine medicine it is a science it is a practice of establishing the diagnosis prognosis treatment and prevention of disease so when we say as a diagnosis it's you know final identification of the disease right what is a final identification of the disease by way of the patients presenting symptoms and signs plus along with the investigations too. So that becomes a diagnosis. Next comes the prognosis. What is the development of the disease? What is the future cause of the disease? How this, is, this disease is gonna be you know, uh, treated or how this disease is going to develop in the future, whether if it is treated or whether it is untreated. And thirdly, it is treatment. The patient has a disease and now he's coming for a treatment. And finally, it is prevention. We all know that the proverb like prevention is better than cure. So prevention should be in the first place. Now coming to medical coding, how this system was developed is like this happened in this, you know, uh, John Grant. He was a pioneer. He was actually the person who instituted this system of, you know, case, uh, recording the patients. Medical coding as a system was evolved in England. It was a London Bills of Mortality that was a first ever recorded classification of this medical coding. You know, this was done especially to calculate or to, you know, to have an account of death of children who are below the age of six, okay? So here is a picture. I think this can very well tell you this was a reference manual that we have till now and which stands as a first ever record of medical coding. And the person who instituted or who just made this system was John Grant. He is called as a father of demography for having recorded first ever system. This can you can see here it is a bill of 1609 this bill records the type of diseases and the number of people who are infected or affected by it. For example, we can see like here, we see like 177 persons have died because of plague, which was rampant at that time. After these bills were all being instituted or where they were all being recorded, a French physician named Jacques Bertillon he was a physician and he was also a statistician. He developed a system called as a Bertillon classification of cause of death. In the year 1893, this system of classification was implemented by the French physician Bertillon. Later on, in the year 1938, the Bertillon's classification was considered, was changed as an international classification of disease. Okay, so the very foundation of the ICD which we are talking about is just nothing but a modification of the Bertillon classification. So as we discussed in our prior videos, ICD-10 is a manual that is being published by the World Health Organization. So that contains the entire classification of the diseases and the symptoms plus other health related factors. Okay, in short, we call this ICD as the International Classification of Disease. But when you see the manual, it says International Statistical Classification of Diseases and Related Health Problems. Okay, so this will be published by the WHO annually and every country will adapt and modify according to their needs and necessities. Okay, because not every disease 
uh, which is prevalent, a disease that is prevalent in one country may not be prevalent in other country. Say for example, quash yogurt or starvation deaths are pretty common in the African and the Asian continents, but this is not the case with the European or the American continents. Next is, as we have seen, like so the prospective medical coder, a student who aspires to be a medical coder will have to know a small history about what the system of coding is all about and what are the subjects that the coder has to learn or, or the manuals that he has to work with, okay? With this ICD-10, we should be knowing like we are not directly coding from the ICD-10 since we are doing the coding of the United States Healthcare. So we take a modification of the ICD-10, which is ICD-10-CM. Here, the ICD-10 refers to the 10th revision and the CM or the 10th edition and CM refers to the clinical modification. So when we say it's ICD-10 CM, this is actually the book of the United States of America. So as we have discussed in our prior videos, ICD-10 CM lists the diagnosis and the conditions and the problems, the signs, the symptoms or any health related factors that warrant, that act as a medical necessity for the various type of, uh, type of treatment that the provider is offering, okay? Now coming to ICD-10 CM, so the students or the prospective medical coders will have to have a fair understanding of this manual because there are so many coding conventions and guidelines and rules that are being elaborated in this manual. We have chapter specific guidelines plus general guidelines. So coders need to be aware of all of these you know, generic guidelines plus the chapter specific guidelines. So all of these will be imparted during the initial course or the basic foundation course in every such institutes. So this would be pretty easy. It is not that complicated provided you understand the rules and the guidelines in selecting the code, okay? So we will be detailing the entire, you know, the entire guidelines or conventions with examples you know, chapter wise, we all will be dealing with all those, so you don't have to worry. Next, uh, this is the condition that we are, uh, I mean, condition that the patient is provide, uh, coming with, right? So next is a CPT manual. CPT manual is a procedural terminology. Here what happens is, it is a current procedural terminology. So now we have this professional edition, and this manual is released by the American Medical Association. Okay, you should understand that every year the code books change. Okay, this is a rule, you know, where every year the coding manuals change. You know, but some might think why is that the books keep changing? But I would say that's the best thing because only then we will be knowing the diseases that are prevalent at that time. And at the same time, we can always cope with the development that takes place in medicine because medicine is again a science which is always developing. So it is always advisable to learn or to be in a profession where there is constant scope for improvement and, you know, novelty, something new discoveries. Okay, with this CPT, so this CPT contains the entire list of procedure codes that are being commonly accepted by the providers of all specialties. So say a dermatologist, say a gynecologist, say a podiatrist. So the medical boards of each of these societies will recommend and there is a process in arriving at or including the codes in the CPT manual. It is not that an easy task. We have task forces, we have you know, advisory boards. They all advise and finally they all unanimously decide and then the code comes into the CPT manual. So every specialist in US, be it whatever specialist which I mentioned just now, all these specialists will find their procedural services in this manual which is the CPT manual. It is the next manual which is a HCPCS Healthcare Procedure Coding System. Here, here in this manual the coder will come to know about the DME pause as we generally say which is a durable medical equipment, prosthetics, orthotics and supplies. All the medical equipments, the drugs, you know the vaccines, the toxoids, all those will be included here or whatever if you are going to buy a wheelchair that will also be found in this manual. So you will have to pick the code from this HIPEX book as well. Okay. Okay, so these are all the manuals of uh, books, the basic books which the coders will have to always live with. 
if you are going to work with a quota these are the books which with which it's like a bible where you have to keep it in your hand every time you'll have to but nowadays we have got some enco- like softwares so these books are being replaced with softwares where all these information will be contained in such softwares what are the subjects as it is a profession in medicine so we need to know what are the subjects that a coder or a prospective coder will have to learn the first thing is anatomy okay anatomy these are all medical subjects which are either taught in medical colleges or in uh, paramedical colleges okay so anatomy is made up of greek word ana plus tamnen ana meaning as under and tamnen meaning to dissect so you are going to study the internal organs of the entire human body so that is anatomy the internal structures of what are the parts what are the organs that are there within the human body so that will be dissected and that you'll have to study so you should know where which organ lies superior which organ lies inferior which lies lateral which lies medial okay so a fair understanding of anatomy is very much expected because your coding would be appropriate only when you are good in anatomy next comes the physiology so we saw those you know structures now how are these structures going to function so physiology again you can break it down as physis plus logos physis meaning nature and logos meaning discourse or study so this this study tells us a function of various structures plus a mechanism of these structures how is a heart working how is a heart pumping out the blood to all over the body and how is it getting back so that is a function that we will be studying in this physiology i don't think more amount of physiology is needed for a coding but you know more of anatomy and pathology will be much needed rather than a physiology but again still if you understand this path of physiology or how it works in a disease state it is good you know you can certainly understand the you know the selection of these codes and that certainly influence a code selection next comes is pathology pathos again it's, these are all great so as i said earlier you know all of these medical terminologies are made up of greek and latin words okay so coming to pathology you can again break it down as pathos plus logos pathos in greek means disease so it is a treatise on diseases study of diseases what happens when this particular organ is damaged or when there is an infection when there is a bacterial infection or when there is an injury when there is a penetrating injury what happens when there is a smoke inhalation what happens to your organs okay so that is a study of pathology next uh, the student will be exposed to medical terminology right medical terminologies these are nothing but the union of words like as just now i broke down like pathology anatomy and physiology so this is what you will have to understand after breaking the words or you will have to create the words so the medical terminology is comes by way of prefixes and suffixes so once you master these prefixes and suffixes say for example this urea it meaning the patient has a difficulty in urination when i say diabetes mellitus diabetes means profuse flow of urine mellitus meaning honey so that means there is honey in the urine which means that there is sugar in the urine okay so that is diabetes mellitus so you should be in a position to break the words you should be knowing the root word plus a prefix and a suffix so that you can arrive at the meaning of such words only then you can understand whether the patient is presenting with a normal a feature or is there any altered derangement within the patient's physiology or anatomy okay now finally we have come to the end of the session now i am going to give you certain you know codes you can just uh, have a look at it so uh, the recent ones being like where the entire world is talking about these okay so let's select the codes so it is so fascinating to see the icd 10 cm has listed these you know infections these diseases which are so new so now you understood what is a need for constant updating and constant change of these codes why are they changing it every year just because of this if they are not changing it now we we do not know how we have to report this condition for example the covid-19 has a code u o u07.1 <clears throat> and if it is going to be associated with a sars if this virus is associated with sars 
SARS, you all might remember, there was an outbreak in 2003, <clears throat> which is severe acute respiratory syndrome. Okay, if that is the case, you need to report as B97.21. If there is, an, it's not COVID, it's some other coronavirus, then you need to report as B97.29. So you can understand the first three are the diagnosis codes, ICD-10 CM codes. Okay, a patient who is now having a coronavirus infection, imagine he's being put on a ventilator. For ventilation management, you can report the procedural service 94002 for the initial day. Fine. I hope uh, this session you would have now got a fair idea what are these diagnoses and procedural codes are all about. So this is our initial class for the basic medical coders. So please continue to watch each of our videos so that because we are going to deliver it in a very slow and at the same time because you need to comprehend, you need to understand. So it might take months, that's fine. You know, we say like better late than never. So it is better you take your time and read and go through each of these sessions so that you can master the entire field of medical coding. So at the same time, kindly share, put your comments, subscribe and share it to at least to students and the needed ones so that this would be of tremendous help for them. Thank you so much for watching this video. We will see you in our next.